Hello everyone, how are we doing? Today's the day, season 6 news be upon us in about half an hour, 30, 30 minutes. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean I usually stream this stuff so it shouldn't be a surprise that I've decided to stream it again. Okay, um, anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, how's everyone doing today? Everyone excited? Everyone excited? Mark 4, Mark 4 armor, we love the Mark 4. Um, other than that, I don't really know what to expect. I think, uh, cause, like, I mean, to be fair, this isn't a trailer. It's more just like, they're probably just going to yap about stuff. There probably will be some trailers mixed in. Um, obviously, we know we're getting the Mark IV. That is a definite fact. And it looks like it is a core as opposed to a kit, which means it should be free. Um, but aside from that, I think game mode wise, we could be getting VIP. Which, honestly, I don't really care too much for. Just because it's another arena mode and I really, really need some BTB content. We might be getting a Falcon. I've seen a lot of leaks point towards that. Oh, thank you for subscribing. Um, I've seen a lot of leaks point towards the Falcon. However, that has been the case for the past three seasons. So I will believe it when I see it. Um, so, like, with a lot of stuff, don't necessarily get your hopes up too much. But we do know we're getting the Mog 4, which is cool. Like I say, aside from that, I'm not 100% sure. But we need cross core shoulder pads and chest attachments. I could see cross core shoulders happening this season. I don't know about chest attachments, mostly just because of how a lot of them are built. I think it would be a lot harder to do. To be fair, I also think with shoulders, we're going to see a very limited quantity actually become cross core. I think there's a few here, like that would probably be fine on almost every core. Uh, I, I think that would be fine on almost every core, that would be fine on almost every core. But like some of these smaller ones, I feel like, I mean even there, it's clipping on the Mark 7. So imagine how it's going to look on like Eagle Strike. Uh, and I know originally, 343 said, well, it's probably just going to be the cannon cores that are cross core and the fracture cores won't be. They've already disproven their own statements with the cross core helmets. So I think that plan may have changed. Um, but I do think as far as shoulders go, limit your expectations as to what shoulders could be. Unless 343 truly don't care about any clipping issues. Um, I definitely only see like a limited quantity in cross core. The, the one that I need it for the most is Chimera, because right now I don't really care for Chimera at all. But I think cross-core shoulders for Chimera, because uh, that's one of the main issues I have with it. The, cross, the shoulders look a bit too similar. Um, they're all like a very similar shape, with like a few exceptions. Uh, with one exception, really. Other than that, they're all kind of the same rounded shape. Uh, so I think cross-core shoulders would really help Chimera out. How much was Deathly Poison? Uh, you had to buy the Razor headset, but I got it for free. Um, this red set for yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I feel like this is going to be like the season three one where show the future. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Where am I walking with this? Uh, we need to the season three one where we Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say we are definitely getting shoulders because if we're not, then I look stupid and then we're this Um, but I think it could happen, uh, and I do want it to happen. I mean, I'm glad we got cross-core helmets, that's, that's the main thing, and hopefully we Well, I can give an actual daily shot review. Well, Combat for 1 play 2k isn't, isn't great. I don't know why. It looks too much better. Uh, the coping's kind of cool, I guess. I like the Captain Falcon um, Shoulders are decent. I, I do like the shoulders, but they're not ones I can use. This is decent, but you like you can tell it's like season 3 content because it's quite a joke too. It goes fine with this one, but the one of them is very nice. Uh, the stance is really cool. The stance is like the best thing in the bundle. The helmet attachment's decent, but it's it's the preview image shows a different attachment. Oh wait, yeah, the preview image shows a different attachment. In fact, the preview image for that that's a different attachment. That is not the attachment you get. Like the the you can't really see it, but the, the image on there is not the attachment you get. You can't hear me. No, I don't see that. My mic's on. What? Put my mic's on, huh? There's no way. The music's loud, let me turn that down. Oh, okay, so you can hear me, but it's just the, 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 the music's too loud, okay. 
Okay, yeah, I, I hear it now. Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad, fellas. Don't scare me like that. Next time, just say it's the game audio. Because <laughs> um, cause then I think I've been yapping for like three hours now. Uh, but yeah, this helmet attachment, this is not the one that it shows on the preview image. And I'm surprised that still hasn't been fixed. But I guess no one really cares enough. Because the, the attachment that it shows in the image was released for free. Uh, I think they ended up switching the attachment to that. Um, but yeah, as a whole, it's kind of it's kind of an underwhelming bundle. It's you know, I think a thousand credits would be pretty pretty good. But one thousand two hundred is a bit much. One fifty for this. Yeah, it's a whack job. I don't really care, but it's not. I wouldn't expect it to be any cheaper, in all honesty. <sighs> Fire. I think to be if it's a core it'll be free because they they But all the cores are supposed to be free. I think if it is a core, it's possible we have a different set of default armor that isn't the typical Mark IV helmet, Mark IV shoulder pads. However, at the same time, if I'm wrong and we end up with like the full Mark IV setup for free, that's crazy, man. That's like the best set of like one of the best sets of armor in the game that we can do for free. I will like as long as Deathly Poison is possible. The Mark IV may end up becoming my main ball, and I'll choose Deathly Poison on him. Okay, I'll try that. That's my shit. Come back to the floor, I'm not shot. Oh, we all. I own him, but I'm still waiting. So then I can shill my creator code that I constantly forget I have. I will enter my Jerome phase in 30 minutes. I cannot touch Halo's 1 or 2. You need to. They're great. Great games. Hey, dude, I'm strong. When Mark IV drops the Spartan Clan role, but I, I don't engage with Spartan Clans at all. Like, it's not even something I'm not even really aware of their existence. Like, I'm aware they exist, but I don't. It's just what I ever pick up on, because I, I don't really care. I'm gonna be slightly sleep deprived of what I'm doing well. At least you're doing okay. Do I run a quick match of Firefight? Well, like 20 minutes. Might as well. I can yap while playing Firefight. And if, if the stream starts, then I'll just quit. <laughs> I don't see Firefight taking more than 22 minutes, though. Oh, thank you for the donation, Helix. Did you buy any of the he it's Season 1 HCS kits? I did not. At the time, they were kits, so I didn't care, because it was like, I can't customize them. Why would I bother? Uh, might get the optic one, but if Deathly Poison becomes cross core, then I won't really care. Um, but yeah, I really hope we get customization for cross core shoulders today. Hopefully, that'd be cool. I'll just. Oh, uh, I bet you can't join now, can you? Are you online? I'm sure. I, I bet I can't even get you in now. I didn't silly. About to both have you, yeah, about to have both you and Ghost in my ears. Will you cause me rocking deathly poisons? Nah. I love the coating, like it is probably my favourite. Okay, Armstrong, you can still join because my game crashed. Um yeah, I love Deathly Poison, but I don't want all my cores looking exactly the same. I know I have Yokai on Yoroi and my Mark 7, but, you know. I'm not evil, I would never- what? Just betrayal boots someone? No! <laughs> what? Hey, which firefighter's my fave? That's fair. Even if we don't get the Mark IV helmet by default, we already have a similar enough helmet anyway. Yeah, but you still have to unlock that. Granted, it is free, so like that's that's cool. Like no issue there, to be fair. When do the machinima for Mark IV? I humbly volunteer to participate in it. I mean, that's more of an if. I haven't really decided on anything like that yet. I probably will, but I don't really know. Still loading in. I don't have time, Armstrong. I don't have time. 
plan on making a campaign DLC in Forge. That's cool, that's cool. You're editing a video, so that's nice. Yeah, I just really hope that, like, the other content's good too, and not just cool armor. I love having cool armor, don't get me wrong, I mean, customization is clearly the main thing I talk about for some reason. Um, but, that being said, you know, I want, I want BTB content. <laughs> I really want BTB content. I want new sandbox editions. I want, I want a lot. I, I sound really, like, you know, um entitled but th th i think there's a lot of stuff that i would like to see what other cores can we even get in the game of the mark 4 i feel like it's all gonna be originals from now on possibly um we could potentially still get like a classic mark 6 like a halo well a gen 1 mark 6 uh and could also still potentially get like gen 2 stuff um although i feel like if we're gonna get any gen 2 stuff it'll come in the form of kits like you'll probably end up with an agent lock kit or uh, a buck kit um but I still feel like there's room for stuff they could do. If, if the Falcon is coming today. Yeah, if it's coming, they'll reveal it today. Oh, right, yeah. This is cute. And hope that this doesn't take longer than 18 minutes. The Mark IV on the trail looks so good. It's beautiful. That's a 343 Bless. It's a lot of songs from Halo 4 and 5. Yeah, I think there's some good ones. I mean, to be fair, it's like Venator. They kind of did. Like, we kind of have, like, a, a, a Mirage version of Venator. Like, Sky Marcher is clearly supposed to be uh, a... What's the word? A successor to Venator. Um, but, you know. You still see us getting Mark 6 Gen 3? That's a kit, though. We won't get that as a core now. Or have I read that wrong? So far, my Mark 5B is my main, but Mark 4 might become my main. That's fair. Go Lorenzo. I swear to God, almost every game is Valhalla. Almost every single game. Well, it's in like Mark 6. I think the Mark 4 is a core. Um, which is, which is Giga based. <laughs> People keep tagging me in leaks, and it's like, oh my god, can you not just waste wait a couple more hours? The street is literally today. Like, I know I occasionally talk about leaks, but there's like, the stuff like this, where we're literally seeing it in the same day, I'd rather wait. Because then when I react to it in my stream, my reaction. I'm very excited to see what, like, what the battle pass looks like and what other helmets we get for it and stuff. Because I feel like there's a lot of potential. Um, it would be nice to get like the Orion helmet and stuff. Uh, I think that could fit onto the Mark IV too. Uh, and then there's like the concept designs for the original Mark IV and there's other like pieces of armor that can bring back. Maybe this is a good opportunity to bring back some more classic helmets or maybe some other gems. Curious to see if we'll get a new fracture or if it'll just be one more. So the HTS will trail. No, and I don't want to. I've seen I've seen screenshots. But like they are literally going to show that in the stream. And if they don't show it in the stream, they will post it straight out there. I don't want to sound like I don't want to sell everyone from the news to just share it everywhere. But it's literally getting the news. And then people were tagging me in it, and it's like, oh man, I, no, I don't want to see it yet. If I want to see it, I wouldn't want to see it. I would like it to. 
Oh, the TV series helmets will be added to the Battle Pass. Those were for the Mark, uh, Mark 7. I could see it. I don't think it'll be Battle Pass. I think that would be really cool, because I really like Rizzi's helmet. That's that's the only one out of all of them, to be fair, that I even care for. Kaiser's okay. Vanix is just EOD again. I don't really care. Um, but I see them being in a store bundle. Big, like when the, when the second season of the show comes out, would love it to be an event. I think it would be so cool if they were released in an event instead, or if at least one of them was released in an event. Um, if, if we had one in an event and then two on the two in the store, like you know, that that'd be cool. I just don't see that being the case. I do think it's quite gonna be uh, the store. Maybe maybe I'm completely wrong, and three four three is really generous. And like, oh, you know, to, to celebrate the show. That's true, but like, so far, the only TV series stuff we've had is Weapon Charms and Emblems, which don't exactly sell very well anyway. That's why the Rainbow Six Siege collab one was free. Because realistically, who's going to log on to buy an emblem of the show? It's just, it's just not really going to happen. Um, whereas the Helmets, like, that's armor, that's something cool. Really well because even if a lot of people that don't like the show have already expressed how much they actually like the armor design. Um, now, I think, like, because there is obviously more than EOD, um, I think it'd be kind of stupid if we had a second battle pass that has a slot that is taken up by EOD again. Um, but I could maybe see that one. I could see Vanix specifically. If one is just going to be made like a login bonus, it would be Vanix. Um, I could see that just being like, hey, thanks for watching this game. Uh, but in regards to the rest, I, I feel like it makes sense if you get a small one of so You get like, three helmets and then a coat in the base Maybe I'm wrong. Like, at the end of the day, I would I would prefer them to be three or five minutes. Um, but at the same time, it's like more so what do I think most like as well as And I think realistically that contract is that are gonna be three or three. So they will be so the same with like uh, five dead or five or one Maybe we want to do the we're doing by putting out the store. Um Maybe, maybe because of that, that's why they decided the Mog Four is free. But we'll, we'll see. Like, I would, I would love to be wrong. I would like it if they were free and that I didn't have to pay for them. Um, I'm just more so thinking, like, what do I think is going to be the more likely scenario? It will make sense for the show helmet drop for the Mark Four since they can. Yeah, they are considered Mark Four. That is a very good point. Game audio is louder. Let me see that down again. Um. Yeah, that is a very good point. They do, they do just uh, say they're more cool. That's why they did it. Um, I do think it, it was kind of silly to put them in. I'm sure it's a shot. I think it was kind of silly to have them in the trailer for last season if they were going to last season. Not that it really matters because it's still going to release. Um, although I say that and there's those Shasha shoulder pads that have been in trailers in season 2 and still on the out. But it is what it is. Um, Let me move my mic close to the mouth, actually. Um, but yeah, I, we'll, we'll find out soon, will we? We'll find out soon. Oh, new power weapon, yeah. oh I, hope, I hope one of the new maps has like a quirky little Easter egg, like a... Um, I need to do uh, sound effects. I mean, we should all see to be in the game. Yeah, that's, that's true. We did have to wait for a while to see the game. And then, to be fair... I hope operations are better this season, and that the battle pass has less filler. Last season's battle pass, honestly, 
I'm not a huge fan. Like, I'm really not a very big fan. Uh, just because of how many emblems there is. There's like a few things that I care about, which to be fair is the case in like every battle pass. But this is the the, the time where I feel like I use the battle pass stuff the least. Because even as far as the stuff goes, uh, I think the filer is a really cool helmet, but I don't care for the foot chest piece, I don't care for the foot shoulder pads or like other stuff in the battle pass. I think the store ones were much better. Uh, but then we did get stuff like EOD and security, which uh, I think it's fair as well, uh, which were all really good helmets. Um, but aside from that, I think the, the Mark 5B chest pieces were good. I didn't care for the shoulder pads. Um, I mean, I guess the more thing was it, yeah, there was kind of... There was, there was definitely a, a lot of kind of lag in the past, but I, I don't think it's like one of them. I do think the operation was super cool. By that, it's too bad. Too bad yeah. Way too many ammo. Um, I think if you can have double XP boosts, just have like two. I get why they're in there, because, you know, there's people that are playing for free and don't necessarily have a resilient double XP boost like most of us do. Um, so I get why that is the case. Um, but, at the same time... Why did I fire that? Why does my shock rifle only have one shot? Weird. Um... I see that guy just really drop it. Ain't no way, bro. So, we need ammo. We need ammo. I need more bullets. I need more bullets. So true. So true. Yeah, like, I've not changed my ammo since the game. So, I don't have to bonus one, which is the uh, I've not changed this. Same with my backdrop, I have the Fracture one from the first 10 Riot Man, which was free, which was very nice. uh, and I think that one looks really cool, so I just use that one, because <laughs> I don't care about any of the other ones. Um, and, like, you know, there, there is definitely emblems that I think are decent, and sometimes I will put emblems in my weapons and stuff, they blend with the person pretty well. Um, but it's, across the board, like, I don't care too much. I think as long as we have some cool Halo Wars themed ones, like one is red. We could have some cool emblems this season. Uh, some cool backdrops. I'd like a backdrop that is maybe originally just the Spirit of Fire. Um, like, just the ship that sits behind the big road. That'd, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool as a backdrop. Um, I do want some more stances. I don't think we had any stances with this season. And the fact that we didn't get a flood one, we just wanted it in like a generic zombie pose. That's kind of... Yeah, that one's pretty cool too. Like I say, like, the, I just don't have any reason to change my ammo. And it doesn't feel anywhere near as personal as it used to because I can't customize it. So, across the board, I just, I'm just not interested. Like, I'm not interested in what the that is. Uh. 
Yeah, that one is pretty. Those are pretty rare ones. Um, like I said, I, I like my I like my chosen one. I, I've been using this like, since, the, uh, since the campaign. Yeah, the, I like the fact that we can't change the colors, and then the fact that some emblems release really no color palette changes, or some of them have like a pattern for like, the public two or three. Um, like, I, I feel like each emblem should, at the minimum, have like five palette changes. Because that doesn't seem like it will be a ton of work. It's, just, it's, just, it's not the same like normal customization. That is a simple just change the color. Because they're just like little PNGs. Right, it's funny, I remember when the game came on and they just like when it had that little emblem bundle that was like three emblems for five more credits. That seemed like a Oh, get like And now some of the stuff we've had since then, it's like... What was I cooking, bro? <laughs> I do miss, I do miss the bundles where it was like a, a, a shoulder pad. There was some shoulder pads in the coating and like... And I really wish I'd bought those when they could still have five more. Now, I feel stupid. And I'm probably never going to get back. Yeah, it'll probably go into like you. Oh my god! Whew. Armstrong, you don't need to tell me how to play! <laughs> I know what I'm doing, don't worry! Right, yeah, we best we best switch over to this, aren't we? Ooh, okay, show starting soon, okay. Time to turn my Xbox off. Right, uh... Audio you're gonna be playing what side are you gonna be playing through? I don't know if audio's on for this. Um let's turn both those on because I'm assuming those are my monitors. And then we pray. Yeah, it looks like we get yeah, we're getting like a classic assault alpha model. I've seen some people say it's the Halo 5 one, I've seen some say it's Halo 4 one. Um regardless, it's more of a classic style. It's gonna fall in line with either Combat Evolved. Halo 3, Halo 4, Halo 5, it's going to fall in line with one of those designs. Same with a war, war, war. Yeah, no, the update to the thumbnail is no longer silhouettes. Wait, really? Oh! Okay! What the fart? Okay, and that's like a very, um, 
Ooh, that coating though. Okay. Yeah, Mark Four looks sexy, man. Yeah, it looks very like Combat Vault Halo Three. Yeah, I did have people telling me it was like, oh, here's the reasons that it's this version of the AR, and it's like, I don't really care. I just know it's like classic shaped. <laughs> it's friend shaped. You know what I mean? We're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna make sure I record my reactions just in case I have an epic hype moment. Okay, so it looks like we're getting sort of like a Taylor Warsy coating. And that visor looks kind of nice too on the image. I can't get the image up on stream yet. Um, do, can I, do I have time actually? Let's see. Hamana, Hamana. Right, yeah, so, yeah. Come out of old Halo 3 style AR. Um, that visor looks kind of nice. The coating, sexy. The armor, sexy. It looks perfect. It looks perfect. That is, that is peak. Uh, right, okay. Just, just, volume one data. I'm assuming there's just no volume playing from the stream. I hope that's the case. I'm trying to like read the chat on that as opposed to my own chat. <laughs> there's music playing on the stream, but I'm not hearing it. Hey, everyone. Okay, What's weird. Up? Absolutely. Is the audio playing for that, by the way? That's just picking up through my mic, can't see it. Is that... I don't know if it's picking up my monitor audio properly. It's it's update. not. We are going to run through what you can expect with our next Halo Infinite update, which by the way will be dropping on January 30th. So we are right around the corner for January our next 30th. free update to the game. It's almost uh, time, we're baby. Also then going to switch gears and talk to Tashi, and we've got all the juicy details that you're looking forward to on what's next for HCS and what you can expect for year three of our championship series program. So we'll get to that in just a bit. Um, but guys, uh, before we go any further, I also want to give a quick shout out. If you're on Twitch, uh, we do have drops enabled. Yep. So mm. make sure you are logged in. Uh, I was about to switch over to Twitch, but I don't care. <laughs> right now, yeah. right? So hopefully you've already got that, that your accounts linked up. But I think it's not even about looking at one, but I don't Hopefully you'll stick with us for the whole show. Yeah. Uh, but we got drops enabled for uh, the show. should for the be today. interesting enough to keep people around for half an hour. Yeah. We can hope. We can Some only hope. Stuff. We can <laughs> only hope, stuff. John. Sometimes we do end up going an hour over schedule. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I. I don't think we're drinking uh, four cans of game fuel on the stream I this time, have done that. right? No maybe way. a little. Maybe a little. Might not be quite as frenetic as our end of year <laughs> stream. It's not coffee. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not coffee. <laughs> All right, so I want to just kick things off by jumping right into what you can expect with Halo Infinite's next update, um, and let's kick that off Oop. by talking about customization. Yes, now, baby. We've already seen some buzz, uh, some speculation. Uh, there's both a tantalizing thumbnail image that that dropped yesterday it's been fun watching some of the energy and excitement there um now without further ado john let's just pull back the curtain mm -hmm. we're gonna jump right into the build here and just go ahead oh, there it is let's it's glorious go. you got the mark four core the there's a little armor effect on that armor coming from the halo is he using series. a utility piece it just or? looks so good i'll zoom in a little bit here we get even closer it's look. a core the, the helmets are common kind of like so it's own, a default you know, you've got the that Spartan effect on the shoulder there. Oh, the, okay, that effect's kind of cool. As well as the chest piece. Yeah, so the, the armor's going to be free, I think, then. Great and it's cross-core. That looks so good! Be one 
of our best just base cores in the game, if not the best. So I, I love it so, so much. good. Yeah, and let's you know, I want to reiterate here, um, this is a full armor core as as you're seeing here in the armor yep. hall. So also it's free for folks that maybe haven't played Infinite. And there you go. Everyone that doubts me when I said it, it's free. Available for free. Um, and when you log in on January 30th, after the update goes out, you'll just suddenly have the Mark IV waiting for you in the armor. That's so cool! So really They're literally giving me out, like, the best uh, set of armor for free. What the hell? expanded our customization story over the last, you know, six to nine months. There's a lot of cool ways you can adorn your Mark IV to, to make it your own, right? Possible yeah. shooters? And we, but, like, the Mark IV, you mentioned it's a core, right? That means you can totally... He's got Kai's helmet on, the, on the, the Mark VII there as well. Last year with the hero kit and people were like can we customize stuff even more uh luckily the mark four is one of those cores that you can do top to bottom but we do have some cool helmets right? yeah yeah right. cross core shoulders so, uh, pretty excited that's the yuri these, shoulder um these we have well and, let me yeah frame this for a second yeah. as many of you probably know uh we're only a few uh, why have you crashed you of halo the series on paramount plus season two will kick off and to help commemorate that and sort of share on the excitement, um, the team has created three helmets uh, that are sort of an homage to three of the helmets in the series. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are excited that these are going to be offered as free ultimate rewards. Oh, uh, the, ult the, the helmet's order, ultimate the rewards. A couple weeks here after the update comes out. So, mm -hmm. John, why don't you let us know what we're looking at here? Yeah, we've got Kai125 with her... Finally, ultimate right rewards made me want to play the game. Mark 7. Uh, Core. Uh, it's, we've got I wonder if the visors will be free or if they'll be ultimates anymore, too. But Kai's just looks amazing. Uh, and Damn, already best season for free content. The three TV show helmets, helmets and the Mark IV. Uh, you've got that looks clean. Riz and cross core shoulders, I man. It looks so good. I don't want to hear anyone tell me that Infinite's nice customization like isn't the best. Up, After this update, I don't want to hear anyone tell me that it isn't. Put the I put the time and effort in. I get to show it off, but oh, Riz sure is, we'll we'll grant it to ourselves. That's yeah. so that's <laughs> such a nice helmet. But yeah, Riz looks absolutely awesome with that Watchdog Neo, and then you have Vanek coming up here. I put him on a Uroi because that. Oh, Neo and and the fracture cores do have cross core shoulders. Bigger, bulkier, you know, kind of. You can use other cool shoulder pads on the core or the other cores. Chimera finally gonna be peak. And these are honestly, I think. Probably the coolest ultimate rewards that we've had in the game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot Fantastic. of helmet chatter out there. So I'm just excited. Like, these helmets aren't coming off either, guys. These mm -hmm. helmets are staying on. Mm -hmm. So uh, that part, we can rest assured. John, you mentioned cross, -core cross -core shoulders helmets. Um, I you know, don't care. Is, uh, a new addition that I believe that was part of our Season 5. Uh, That's update, a new right? Yoroi really rest attachment. Journey, uh, to basically give players more flexibility and more control and based on player feedback people just want to be able to mix and, and match across the different cores right yeah. so we started with coatings we have a ton of coatings in the game going forward and retroactively we started that work with season four continued in season five so now we have a huge variety a variety of coatings that you can apply to any core mm -hmm. now we have the helmets that you mentioned but we're not done. I want to see the Eagles. Not and done. I think okay. I've noticed something here that some of these models that you set up don't quite look the way yeah, that I remember them. So uh, what's next for cross core, John? Yep. So any eagle eyed people have noticed you've got so every cross core shoulder. shoulders. Okay, every shoulder pad's uh, cross core. You shoulders right now are loaded up on this Uroi core. You see the Mark 7 right here. And then you also have a SPI Mirage shoulder on this side. Uh, okay. I loaded up a bunch okay. of these Spartans. This one had the Rakshasa. I love that elite shoulder mm. kind of on the side there. Uh, I mean, the, the kind of ones clearly yeah. fit together a bit better than too, like you, the you fracture ones do. Go right? But that looks good. Always, Security on that looks kind of good. Go on the that? shoulders. It's just it's the, just the way your, you do it's it. Your, it's it's your, it's your well, are you more yeah. of a you like your and the dragon one kind of suits really well. Oh God, it's going to be so peak. Oh my lord. Okay. Well, now you can branch out. There's That's no true. constraints I mean, here. Once they gave you the option, right? Again, just to clarify, that means by default, if you're new to the game, now because we're getting another core, that is nine helmets and nine sets of shoulders for free. Crazy. So you can see here, we've got the eagle. They're fully cross core that you can put on anything. That is a chunky boy. I made him. I made him big. Yeah, and then the dragon here. This one I think is from the Uroi core. That's so good. We're able to apply a bunch of different things uh, across all the Spartans. Cross school fruit chassis uh, as well. Oh my god! So good. Yeah. That's a new wrist attachment, I think, too. Maybe. And a Mark V shoulder there. And yeah. we've got a nice little comp here that's got 
tons of combinations. And those the those Yoroi shoulder pads still haven't come out. And it's really That's a new helmet, though. Now we've unlocked this ability. That's got to be one of the like Mark IV helmets. That looks sick. Helmets. What the hell? We've done visors. We're doing shoulders. Uh, we've really just continued to unlock the potential. Uh, and I think the customization in Infinite yep. just continues to get better. Yeah, it's, I want to stress. So I want to stress too again for maybe players that, that haven't experienced what we did for the helmets or the coatings. On January 30th, when the update lands, this will just automatically happen. So all the mm -hmm. helmets that are already in your inventory will suddenly just have multi-core functionality, and they'll just work, um, mm -hmm. much the way we did for coatings and, and helmets prior. So. Super excited, looking forward to that. I'm pretty sure um, some folks on the team crunched the numbers, and it's there's like billions of possible combinations now of how you could really make your Spartan your own. So the 10k spawn yeah, ranking yeah, is going to be going to be painful because um, everyone's going to look see, uh, amazing. The levels of creativity that the community brings to bear as they make their Spartans their own. So that's that's one one piece of uh, what's coming January 30th. Super excited. We really appreciate the, the passion that we've heard. We know we've been on this journey together, uh, hearing your feedback and trying to do a better job of improving that story, customization, and I want to give a shout-out to the team because it's been kind of a passion project, labor of love, and I think Shoulders represents really the pinnacle. I mean, I think yeah. we, we, we checked the most impactful boxes there, and it's exciting to see what you're going to do with that. Yeah. I can't wait to just sit there once the, the update like drops, an and, and I'll just spend right? some serious yeah. time in there yeah and fiddle with the customization so another part of our customization story that we want to touch on um is uh, basically we'll have ways that you could earn customization ob items to adorn your mark IV or mm -hmm. other cores if that's your preference um some folks if you've been playing infinite you're probably familiar in season five we introduced operations mm -hmm. um and uh, i'll give a quick primer here for folks that aren't up to speed but you know Operations are the evolution of the events we used to have in Halo Infinite. These are time-based, approximately four to six weeks long. Uh, they include a 20 free tier uh, operations pass mm -hmm. um, that you will progress through and will allow you to unlock uh, customization objects, items, coatings, uh, XP boost, things like that as you play the game. And by the way, not constrained by challenges. It's pretty much play your way, play whatever you want, and it's just an opportunity to earn um, some cool free stuff that's usually mm -hmm. all in a thematic wrapper. So mm -hmm. when Season 5 debuted, uh, we did have two operations. Currently, Winter Contingency 3 is live, live in right the now. game right yep. now. Um, now, one aspect to note about operations is at the end of that defined time period, uh, they, they, they will go away. Um, so you basically will have the duration to earn your track or you do have the option of uh, upgrading to premium, which will... Yeah, I mean, this whole stuff we already know. It kind of sounds like maybe we're going to uh, have another way to unlock stuff. Cosmetic yeah. unlock yeah. item, but it also now makes that operations pass kind of last forever. It never expires. Yeah, so um, it doesn't go away. It doesn't. If you, it, if you do go to premium. premium. Otherwise, yeah. you're still free to unlock everything that you can uh, during the duration of that window. Mm -hmm. Another cool aspect of operations that's based on player feedback is, you know, with the old event system... It was cool to be able to earn stuff, but if you happen to be out of town or away from your Xbox or PC for a period of time, you missed out. So when an operation has concluded, it will then become available in the shop. It will just be available as an evergreen purchase. And at any point you want to, you can go in, you can pick up the operation and use the Battle Pass switcher and go back and progress it at, at your own leisure. Sorry, so, I would yap more, but I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything. System, but so far, they just talked about operations, which we already know how they work. Go more forward with that. So as we move uh, forward we with this release often. onwards, operations are really what we're leaning into, and this is the way that we will deliver kind of ongoing, every four to six weeks, 20 tracks of free content that players will be able to progress and earn uh, as you see fit. So our next first operation, yeah. kickoff okay. 2024, okay. is Spirit of Fire. Yeah. Um, definitely some some crossover vibes. Yeah, However, it's a purge bonus for the events. And yeah, okay, I'm already seeing a lot of speed, emblems, uh, but just a lot of weapon charms. Glimpse, That's uh, kind of what you can expect. I believe a lot of the cosmetic tier ten for the first pass, actual operations pass. Are, okay, that looks uh, good though. That looks cool. Your Mark IV, that device is but, nice. Uh, given that we have cross the nice. here across the board, you're not limited to that. Oh, and that helmet's so free. What you're seeing here, which is, is cool. Uh, we like that. Just a quick pan that is of awesome. In the of fire but that is a lot of filler. That, that is an absurd amount of filler. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this release will also include two more operations passes that will come. Oh, so there's going to be three operations uh, this we'll season. We'll have more details on the dates of those later, but we did want to give you a quick sneak peek at what those entail uh the next operation after spirit of fire i mean spirit fire theme which is kind of uh, based cyber showdown three cyber so showdown three let's go 
kind of that techy aesthetic that we've yeah. seen a few times okay. before. Okay, a load of filler, um, load of filler. Slight change on it uh, this time around. We call it like the viral machine. Kind it's of more aesthetic. Chimera stuff into it, right? It looks really, really Okay. Cool. You'll see more cables. So they mix Chimera and Cybershirt onto one of them. Uh, and it just Interesting. Looks a little bit more menacing. Might be my There's a free helmet. That's idea. okay. There's some decent yeah, stuff yeah, there. Yeah, it feels like it'd be right near okay. your right? <laughs> I really like those shoulders we just glossed over, oh, too, because they, okay. uh, they, uh, they adopt the same texture pattern um, as the visor. visor. Kind yep. of creates yeah. a cool look. Yeah. There. And then once we complete uh, Cyber Showdown 3, uh, the next operation to come after ten that ten is... Four. The return of the yapping. Oh, the return of the yapping. Okay, that's based. Kind of grunt theme shenanigans. Again, it's just like um, some fun it's like stuff ten tiers before you start really actually getting the good stuff, man. I it's so disappointing. Focus, you know, just having fun. Oh, there's armor in the yapping. I'm a yapper, bro. I'm <laughs> such a yapper. Okay, it's some Mark Seven stuff though. It looks pretty cool. Humor along with that. There's a helmet. There's a helmet too. Is that grunt themed helmet? It's a yap yap helmet. The shoulders look great, and the helmet almost. He's got a little crown with it. That looks sick. What the hell? Uh, naturally, as we get closer uh, to release for January 30th, you'll you can see and you'll hear more about the customization coming uh, on Halo Waypoint. Okay. And then, of course, we'll have more details to share. This about is good stuff. And the and this is uh, of you know in in the weeks and months ahead. So, sure. But uh, again, operations. Three operations. Three of, of Halo Infinite good Point things. Four, uh, <laughs> four to as a whole, I didn't look too bad. Your operation pass approximately every four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Already, I like those I'm more than. Point. Cool. All right, so now uh, we're going to change gears on the arms. customization lane, and let's talk about our new map yeah. coming on as part of our January Please 30 be a BTB update. Map. Please be a uh, We're going to jump into the build here. And oh, that AR. You are already inside this map, and uh, mm -hmm. take it away. Yeah, so I'm noticing they mentioned... It's called Illusion. It's an arena oh, map. Cool. It's an arena map. It looks cool, though. Uh, and it's got they mentioned the operations, but they haven't the said anything about the battle right pass. Uh, right I'm now, really kind of concerned there's no battle pass this day. season, and it's uh, just it's three operations instead. There, and you can look across at their sniper. Really cool center lane combat, but one thing that I love... Oh, the classic active camo. ...is that you're kind of in this Oni research facility. That's a nice little got the power-ups kind of being studied. I think this is the original Halo 1 camouflage. Mark IV is a core and it's uh, free. It is completely free. The Mark IV is completely side. free. Uh, Cross-core shoulders. It looks so cool when you kind of look at the, the storytelling elements of the I'm map. I'm a big you know? fan of those storytelling vignettes yeah. and maps. And a big shout out. This might look cool, though. I do like how this looks. The community have done some great work on yes, that front. Have. Some very creative execution. The, yeah. By the way, this is crazy, too. Just a... Clean I'm starting to think the might not be a battle right pass. Here, sniper hallway warfare. Which scares me. <laughs> not other than needs and to be, but there also kind of does. It's kind of got lanes that like with the battle with the operation being called Spirit of Fire, that really makes me think uh, there isn't one. Lots of verticality, which might uh, remind players of some some CE. But a cool thing is, if you're on the left side, you're like, oh, my teammate's getting damaged on the right side. You can jump on over. And then the operations the don't feel as special because they're no longer an event. Here. They're just a substitute for the battle pass. So I really yeah, hope there is still a battle pass. Right, so you go both ways. What have I missed? Just got here. The, the Mark IV is, is an armor core. It's completely free. We're getting cross-core shoulders. This is a new map. The three events, we're getting the three operations. Look really cool. I'm really starting to grow cool. concerned that there's no battle pass and instead it's just replaced it's by operations. Closely. Noticed I've got the uh, CE kind of assault rifle there that I'm running around with. Love this. This is part people of tried to tell me it wasn't a CE one when I shared it originally. Option. You can get this uh, CE assault rifle and it just looks stellar. But I'm going to run around to this other side here real quick and then we can take a look at that center hallway, which has got is, is my favorite part of the map and probably everyone. It, it, looks, it, looks, it, looks, it looks very interesting. In it looks yeah, very yeah, that's true. Scene, but also, yeah. like, but like, maybe there's more to yeah. it. Than the fact that they showed the events, yeah. I don't know, it leaves me a bit concerned. So we saw the overshield spot just back there kind of sparking up and exploding. Um, but the camo side looked pretty normal. You can see active camo emitting, but the overshield's got narrow. It also means like if there's no battle pass, so there's no way to earn credits this season. Um, okay, that's cool. So you go in so you're completely camoed in the middle of the map. And you're camouflaged. And that's you awesome. That in here, all the players are camouflaged. If you run around and jump and shoot, your camo will be revealed. That's but so cool. Run in here Finally, maybe go fun mechanics in a map. Down the center, try and get camoed, uh, but everyone's going to expect that play. Uh, the so AR is not free; uh, it's really a purchase bonus for on the operations, so it should be 500 sense. credits basically. Yeah. Campers Paradise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would. All these corners yeah. are making me nervous. Yeah, and it's got these side little areas which are 
funnel into the center, which are really cool too. You know, sure. I think you were saying the other day, just even from playtesting. I mean, I don't. Oh, this map's gonna be so campy. In a Halo map ever. I, for sure, in Infinite, I haven't seen any spaces that use game mechanics this way or equipment this way. Um, yeah. And Visually, it looks I've very similar to Recharge, but I think gameplay-wise, it looks really, like very unique. Dubious. Like I'm very excited I'm to try this out. Not, we were going to be able to pull this off, right? I think it's kind of a big thing to do to let people have. That looks way more like the Halo. Like that, right? Sorry. Uh, but the team just like out Halo Four. The oh, no, they've, they've already said it's based on the combat of all really one. Enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's, it's I need, yeah, I'm praying there's a new BTB map. I love arena stuff sometimes. I really need BTB content, man. I really need BTB comp content. Yeah, corner from by sketch. Yeah, I can't wait to... I mean, I will... I'm scared of this hallway, but I also could totally see myself just, just kind of crouching and chilling and uh, waiting for waiting for my moment to strike. But And I... And I think in general, like big props to Cliff Schultz. He was a level designer on this one. Um, I really love the the movement in this map. It just it's it's super fluid. Um, it's just it's really it's fun. To yeah, it's be, yeah, it's basically just a high res um, combat evolved the model. Launches, right? yeah. like yep. those, it's just fun to be su always moving. Well, high, rather high poly, but there's a, a little uh, thing in there. That's cool. The air I've seen in play tests. This might better be I in the next one. We'll see. Here the next one is a free for all. One, so we'll see. Uh, through. Uh, one <laughs> day I'll go for it. Someone will go for it. Mint will beat you too. Yeah. yeah. Someone will do that. That, like is, that, that looks right. like that shot. That that moment was made for Mint Blitz. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I think we're going to see a really interesting mix of some some cool strategies, but also a fair amount of just shenanigans because there's an unpredictability aspect that I think we'll see in that hallway. So. Uh, we'll have more to sort of say and, and show about this map on Halo Waypoint in the coming, I think, sometime next week. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have a blog on that. So I don't oh, yeah. Threat, threat Sense is going to be like meta on this map. That's crazy. This map, but, um, of course, we have Michael Shore here, the Forge Lord. So, uh, mm -hmm. of course, Forge it maps. would not be cool an Forge without some cool Forge. Oh, is so it not going to be a BTB map course. again? We'll Please. Forge. I mean, Forge really changed Unless the game it's for about Infinite, uh, when it launched and then... Really, we took it to the next level with the AI Toolkit. Season 5 oh, was yeah. a Forge Lover's Paradise, and we're all reaping the rewards of that, right? Oh, Just continuing gosh. to see amazing experiences, amazing creations. So, um, John and Shore, take it away. Tell us what yeah. we can expect for uh, Forge with our January 30th update. We're getting close. So, yeah, we're <laughs> you're, you're such a tease. Oh. <laughs> is it Covenant uh, stuff? Is it Covenant Palette? This is a community ask from, from Forever for Infinite Forge, and... Um, it's the Covenant palette. Yes. Um, okay. Art, the Forge art team did a, a, just a stellar job on this. Covenant one. stuff in Infinite Arts that looks so good. What the hell? The Covenant palette. Um, all these curved surfaces that I know a lot of you Forgers have been trying to recreate with our existing um, objects. Um, now the objects can do the work for you, right? Mm -hmm. um, so structure pieces. Um, accents um there's there's some vfx in there um i had some decals i think i saw too oh, fly um, on through the yeah. incredible Ooh, so the high charity doors Covenant right dance party zone yep. right here all right i, s I set up a, a little club in here it's a vip room yeah, yeah that's um, just, like the covenant yeah, uh, yeah, the covenant stuff looks really, really nice <laughs> it just like, that's free by the way <laughs> We're home. It just feels, it's so good to be just bathed in purple and all these yeah. smooth surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, Podium. I mean, just like gee, what do you think the first map will be that the Forge community yeah. might want to try to make with this new palette, guys? <laughs> Maybe midship. Oh, yeah. I sure <laughs> hope so. <laughs> yeah. Can't uh, wait for another midship remade. Midship will get made, uh, remade. But you mentioned decals, right? We've got uh, a bunch of the Covenant alphabet here. Uh, of course, I tossed in some weapons for decoration. Uh, lots of cool. You mentioned the effects. This galaxy effect is one of my favorites, uh, and it's actually giant by default. And I shrunk it all the oh, way. Oh, my down. chip's already got a remake, right? Here. This I wanted to add a little. It's bit just now it's gonna have another nice another remake. Vibe of like a like a Covenant bridge, you know, on their ship. They always had like these holograms floating around. Mm. Uh, so figured I could add that in. This this one is actually really cool. Uh, some fans might recognize this from. A bunch of the Covenant maps, right? You get to add that. I just scaled it up to make it kind of look like a wall uh, and add it in as I fly through the ground here. Yeah, um, but and, and if yeah. you don't want it purple... Yeah, course, that's that's fair. Aquarius is, yeah, is Aquarius is more of a midship successor. Yeah. It's It's yeah. got a lot of midship yeah. elements, but it, it clearly yeah. isn't midship. Yeah. But yeah. then we've got we Starboard, one of the Forge maps, like one of the first ones that was added that is a midship remake. Some things have kind of gone red. 
right? So you can totally customize these, mm. all of these objects, so they fit whatever kind of Covenant era or ship you're going for, uh, and it, it works out really well. Dude, the forge I think that can work really well yeah, for even more banished stuff too, considering the banished like scavengers, so they take a lot of Covenant stuff. So it'll be really cool to sort of see some people mix this with the banished palette to create like a, a bit of a mishmash kind of thing. I had a Cortana set up on the plinth, yeah. Well, I think that'd be awesome. Make sure she was able to open the door for us. But lots of cool pieces here. You can see them all. Tons of pieces and objects. And they're all customizable, scalable, right? Here's that galaxy effect in its normal size. So you could scale that up even more if you, you wanted. You put it in the skybox if you wanted, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. oh. uh, some default objects. But of course, ah, that's there it is. Yeah. The legendary Covenant Sniper Tower. You can just build it up, set it up. And I actually, I don't know if I showed you guys this. I tossed some, some snipers up here because I wanted to just, be ready just for Just for kicks. <laughs> this, pa this pairs really nicely with the AI mm -hmm. toolkit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am, I am starting to think we don't have no, a battle no, pass. I, I think that would explain the why there's three operations and why we actually have good ultimate rewards. Like, I, I think they are like leaning towards the no battle pass. And I think that was, that, that to be fair, that should have been obvious by the fact they cut it down to 50 tiers last season. I'm starting to not have one at all. Maybe you're like, yeah, I'm not going to build anything with these blocks. That's really not the point. The point is that we're going to benefit from the community that will do amazing things with these. And, not only will we all be playing midship, I imagine probably by within a by the end of the weekend after we release <laughs> this, I'm sure, right? Um, but it's just giving even more tools in the hands of forgers to, to do even more cool things, and uh, we're going to see going forward this year. Battle pass kind of suck anyway. Yeah, but it's like no battle pass, but then we have three of three players, operations really instead. Sure. Which, to be fair, technically that means everything's free. Just love the covenant pattern but in there. and speaking of pitch, I don't, I don't know. Segue. We'll see. Um, with this update, um, we are now allowing for uh, players to customize the color and the materials on certain um, biome objects. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you like the thing, like if there's no battle pass, it means there's no winnable credits, which kind of sucks. But to be fair, you only get the amount that you spend anyway. Um, it does mean everything's free except the purchase bonuses. I don't know. Like it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. It happened. Uh, and so, like now, if you're making a snow map, you know, maybe you can have iced over or blue, um, blue foliage. Um, you can change the the color of trunks to be whatever you need it to be. Yeah, I think I made this one yellow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it feels like such a minor thing, but it's gonna. It just offers so much more creativity, like options for yeah, forgers, really right? Does. To really personalize these experiences and maps. Yeah. You like, can even get real crazy. If, yeah, if you need a UNSC blue metallic uh, <laughs> dead tree stump, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we got you covered. Yeah, I th uh, yeah. Th this all looks really cool. Being able to change materials now and stuff. I'm foliage. to learning how to use forge. You got me. I've been waiting for that. That looks really interesting. You know, you could, like, Husky Raid maps are kind of like a really good entry point to uh, using Forge. There's even a template out there where all you would have to yep. do is... Husky Raid is a very good entry point for Forge. Very good entry point. Okay. Like, that's the one thing, if anyone ever says, like, <laughs> what do you think the best... Because uh, I, I, for some reason, I get asked about Forge stuff. Um, I'll be real. I'm not, like, a great Forge. I know we got diminished into matchmaking. Uh, I'm not I'm not a great Forger. Um, uh, I had a lot of help on diminished. Realistically, if you want to so, attempt to get a forge uh, map into matchmaking, your best bet is Husky Raid. Because it's because you don't have to worry about well, balancing. You just have to make it look pretty and make sure that the spawning works properly. This is this is going to give players a lot more range in how they can make the maps look though having decals on the floor and stuff uh, it'll definitely so allow you to so put a lot more detail into maps like, which is great you know, grime or you know dirt you can just you can change it, it could look like um, maybe it's a spilled liquid right mm -hmm. or um whatnot there's there'll be a million uses I of all this accidentally stuff. made like blood splatter there you go yeah, you did, <laughs> like, i wasn't even going for anything <laughs> you're, just you're, with you're the starting optional. to take the stream into m territory <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, update our esrb yeah. logo at the uh, front um, but again yeah, tons of different things like the custom mm -hmm. customizable um biome stuff like the decals just it's just you're just going to see more di like more different that's a horrible phrase yeah. but more different um experiences just visually yeah, yeah i cannot wait to, to just continually empower our amazing forge community to just really push the limits of it's there's almost there is almost no more limit right 
Now, of course, the maps and sort of the geometry aspects of Forge is one part of the yeah. equation. Um, but of course, Forge also allows people to do scripting and create brand new modes that we've seen. Um, some of the early favorites I know, like Repulse Soccer and things like mm -hmm. that, right? So big changes coming on the mode front. Yes, so huge changes on the mode front. Um, with the with this new release on January 30th, we are introducing the Forge Mode Creator functionality, which basically allows you to create mode um, scripts within a Forge session and save that out as a mode. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be a boon to just sharing your mode. Previously, uh, you Forge gained some really good improvements here. In the map, and so if you wanted to play a Repulse Soccer, which is a great example. You had to have that mode, Why is the quality uh, on the stream embedded, so uh, low? Logic embedded in each arena that you made. <gasps> this now is not playing in 1080p. You just have to make sure that the map speaks to the mode correctly. It must just correct the stream. Talking to the mode, but then it just and then you can share that mode much like you would share a mode that you create in custom game mode editor, right? Mm -hmm. So it uses the same flow that all of our other modes use. So it's a huge, huge improvement and a bonus is that all that mode logic um, that was previously taking up your map budget is no longer going to take up that map budget because now the logic gets saved and then it's in a mode separate. From okay. So super excited to share this. That's a pretty cool way to be able to save on file size and stuff to too. This. Uh, they did a great job on this. So um, I'm super excited to see what the players do with this, you know, without sort of the, the map mode shared budget. Sure. So they can right? increase, if they want to, increase fidelity and just sort of scope of their map, while the modes, meanwhile, become a lot more ubiquitous. Exactly. And yeah. I think more it allows more sort of sharing and collaboration where yeah. a community member can take a mode and now iterate on it and it can start to snowball and branch off in other Yeah, modes. potentially. And I think as a player, I'm excited to hopefully see all that start to translate to these modes and experiences then coming back into matchmaking over time. and. We all benefit as players. Yeah, it'll make it much easier for modes, for uh, player modes to come into to matchmaking and playlists. So that's another side uh, side effect that's a huge plus. So cool. More power and easier to share. Yes. Awesome. What's not the like? <laughs> I know. Exactly. You guys have been <laughs> cooking. Shout out to the Forge team. Uh, we're not going to go on the weeds here today, but just want to acknowledge, too, there's additional quality of life updates, this one some, some bug Sorry. fixing, some AI toolkit improvements. Mm -hmm. I yeah. believe there'll be a, a deeper dive blog coming out in the ne sometime. Next week. Yep, yeah, on the way week. to release, so stay tuned if you yeah. want to learn more about that. Um, and then, sure, I think we were hoping that uh, – I heard you brought a little tease with us. Uh, we want to give uh, folks uh, just a little small glimpse at – what else the Forge team has cooking? This is not January 30th. We're looking a little further out here just for a future okay. update. But um, what did you bring to show us here today? So we have two screenshots. The first is of a future palette. Um, this is the, the, I guess, I don't think we have a name for it yet. It's the Alien. I like palette. that. There's That's like a lot of the stuff they use on like Forest and stuff. Also, um, more structural pieces that are not in this. Flood palette as well. This is the second one going to be a flood palette. Uh, super excited about That looks that. really good though. Good. And how this might tie in also with the biome customization that we're that's For coming sure. out no, soon, yeah. right? So lots of ways to make really crazy exotic um, landscapes, right? Mm -hmm. And then also in the future, a fan favorite and highly requested. Yes, Forge, <laughs> that looks so uh, good. Forge object palette, and um, this just looks. Again, I mean, I so say this gross, every time. Our, so Forge our, team, our team, That looks amazing. Oh, we're going to have some really good fl flood maps. In development, and it was just, it's gruesome. It like, is. It's hot. It's for people who yeah. maybe don't like to look at gruesome things. I had, I was like, ooh, that's It's gross. just disgustingly that's awesome. Really Everything's glistening. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say mm -hmm. it, guys. This is a pretty moist palette. <laughs> it is pretty moist. Uh, he said that. He said uh, it. But, yeah, the... <laughs> I Having can't. flood, like, so you can infect you your masses. I know. I'm sorry. I told you I was going to say yeah. it because uh, so it, I didn't it's, believe you, and but here we are. Hey, it's just a word. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it's gross, but a big yeah. shout out to the Forge team. Uh, really good stuff cooking. Again, yeah. reminder: those two pallets. We'll have more to share later. Those are just just giving you a glimpse of some stuff that's actively cooking yep. uh, for future updates. But everything else prior is coming out on January 30th as part of that free update. Yep. Um, thank you so much, Thor. Before we turn you loose. To give you a chance if you have any kind of parting comments or any sort of final thoughts you'd like to say here in our first stream of the year um as always kudos and thanks to everyone who contributes to the community you know I'm, I have to. last year we, we brought in like 44 maps to to infinite from the community specifically right and this year i'm sure we'll i wait on one of those i wait on one of those maps i wait on one of those maps
we're doing our best to empower you to make stuff that's even crazier. I can't wait. Can't wait to see the results, yeah. and yeah. I can't wait to play some midship very soon. <laughs> you know the mission. Yeah, get on it. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, earlier in the week, we had a chance to sit down and catch up with the playlist team and hear from Fantasia about what she and the team are cooking up and uh, what we need to think about and know for playlist uh, in, in sort of the near term. So uh, take a look at that, and then we'll be right back. All right. Next up, we are thrilled to welcome... First time on the show, Fantasia Gendro. Hello. Fantasia! What's up? Welcome! Hi! <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the show. We're going to talk Thank about you. playlists. Before we do that, though, just give us a sense. Like, who are you? What do you do here at 343? Yes, I'm, so I'm Fantasia. I am a playlists lead and insights manager. So, I overlook all of our playlists, plan them out. I especially work with community playlists, huge part of what I'm doing right now. And for my insights part of my job, I worked with I work with all of our data teams in the studio, and um, we have so many safety support community, um, and you are. And what we do is I look at the data that we're receiving from all of these sources and make better decisions on the content that we're putting out to make sure that we're always iterating on what the players are asking for. Do we need to adjust this weapon? Does this map need tuning? Um, things like that. Oh, sounds like never a dull moment. Uh, <laughs> safe to say we have no nonstop feedback coming in yes. all the time, yes. right? Yes, more feedback, love feedback. And you have lots of experience doing that bef even before yes. joining 343, yes, right? Yes, I come from Xbox Research. Um, I was there for about six or no, six and a half years. Um, loved it very much. Um, definitely coming from the side of wanting to provide the experience. They talk, they talk about upcoming playlist stuff. Gamers always have... Um, create those memories together with your friends, with your family, and, and being able to be creative and explore worlds, and data actually really allows us to do that so that we can continue to make things. Well, they will be talking about the uh, uh, upcoming playlist stuff, I think. And it's really nice to have that background and bring it into playlists, especially. For sure. Well, I will just say thank you, and let's just, we'll assume all the great stuff that's happened in the game over the last, you know, six to nine months, uh, we'll thank you for that, um, <laughs> as being a tip of the spear there. So. <laughs> thank you. We definitely want to talk playlists because it's impossible to think about what's next for Infinite and what we can look forward to. Playlists are such a key part of that player experience. Um, we've seen a lot of great stuff already starting to happen mm -hmm. since the advent of Forge, Game Changer. But uh, maybe to kick things off just at a high level as we look ahead uh, to 2024, what are your priorities? Like, What are you and the team focusing on? Kind of Just give us a sense of kind of where you're going and, and how you're thinking about playlists. I hope they talk about sandbox stuff, please. You know, I need, like, new like weapon variants or a new weapon so, or a vehicle um, or something. Please. We've got a minimum of three maps planned for that. Um, but we're also looking at refreshing the other playlists that we had. So Husky Raid, Squad Battle. Um, but we're also planning content that we haven't published before. Um, and that is something that I know our fans have been asking for. We're definitely looking for original creations. So like um, yeah, in regards to that stuff, playlist. there is there is really good stuff coming. There is really good stuff coming. what everybody has created. We definitely use tags that we've already put out to better sort through content depending on what we're looking for. But, I mean, as time is going on and as, like, the year goes by, you know, we're planning out content ahead of time to make sure that we're hitting those beats for like, you know, oh, you know, the season's coming around. We want to have a map that's just like, you know, wintry or something. And we'll use those tags within um, Custom Games Browser and Forge to help us better identify that content. But we also, again, use those data teams that we have, especially community. And we look at our Forge communities that are out there and we use... What did I miss? Oh, uh, they, they showed us some Forge stuff and now they talk about upcoming playlists. Are there are, like... From what I'm aware of, there's some cool stuff coming to that. Have our eyes on it. There's only so Over the next at, at six months, I would say. So, yeah. um, but it's all coming. I'm not sure everybody really realizes how much it takes and what goes into getting a map from the community mm -hmm. into matchmaking. Could, is there a, a TLDR version? You could just help us kind of break that down for us. Like, what does that process entail? Yeah, for sure. So... How we like to go about it is, so say we have a playlist that we want to go after, um, and we will look into the customs game browser or you know what we've seen before, and we'll start to look at the maps that are actually out there, and we will vet them ourselves by playtesting them, seeing what is the level that that, or the bar that the map is already at, for a good quality experience. Will our players have fun? Will they enjoy it? 
and once we have assessed that map and decided that it's a pretty good quality already, we will then reach out to that forger, ask them if they're interested in working with us to get that map to an even higher bar so that we can... Yeah, I mean, that was the thing that happened for us with the Manish. Our players enjoy them. And if that forger is wanting to work with us and do that, we will bring that map in and we'll have it go through test passes, QA. QA will... You know, depending on where the map's at, sometimes... I, I mean, we got pretty lucky, because... The, the, uh, I mean, I say lucky. There wasn't really too much that we had to update. There was only, like, one thing that was required, uh, one thing that would, like, be preferable, and then there was, like, one that was, like, completely optional. Um, so, like, there wasn't a ton that we had to change for Diminished. But, yeah, you'll just get, like, asked. If, like, if you do, if any of you do happen to be working on Forge stuff, uh, like, once it's published, you just... Gotta make sure everything works properly, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's, that's in addition to the forgers having their own lives while they're trying to work on their own exactly. forge creations. Exactly, yes. And that is another reason why we've tried to, to bake in even more time. Like, so when we plan a playlist in advance, we want forgers to be able to have the, the time to work on their map that also allows them to live their lives. Because we understand Yeah, they haven't referenced it. Season 6 up there. passion. Community-made content is always going Weird. to be, you know, up to the forger. This is going to be like a winter update scenario, where it's just events. Maybe for both of you, because John, I remember you did a lot of uh, similar types of work during the Halo 5 era, helping yeah. to sort of curate, partner with the community to bring forged content to matchmaking. But do you have some high-level, like, like, what kind of bugs? Yeah, that's possible. What kind of tips would you offer to forgers who would someday like to have their content in matchmaking? What are some of the main sort of blockers or gaps that maybe you experience when you're reviewing this content that maybe a forger <laughs> wouldn't think wouldn't think about? I'd love to fight some reason. That would be cool. You said blockers or gaps, <clears throat> and two of those are are <laughs> those things are on things. maps <laughs> that could be a problem. Uh, gaps. If you've got a death pit on your map, for example, mm -hmm. you want to make sure it's very com clearly communicated as if you go down there, you will die. Mm -hmm. Right? It is a acid pool. It's flames. It's something. Uh, if you have it just kind of look a little bit lower than the rest of your map and then you die, a player goes in there and dies, mm -hmm. they're going to be like, what the heck, I was expecting that I could traverse there. Uh, so you want to make sure things are clearly communicated on the like actual golden flow of the map. And then blockers, you want to make sure people can't get outside of the map. Yes, yeah, any, the majority of the bugs that we actually find, and so far that we've been finding in the maps that we've been putting out is the out of environment bugs. So many of them. So many of them. <laughs> you well, can always get out of yes. a map. That I mean, we find, I think yeah. that's the difference between, like, as a forger, me and my buddies are just kind of tinkering and playing mm -hmm. on my map versus now exposing it to the masses, and it's just getting hammered by exponentially more people that maybe have nefarious intent, so to speak, and they could just grief the whole game, right? Yeah. So, like, that's part of why that bar has to be so much higher, yes. and thus the testing has to go through more scrutiny. We have to go back to the forgers and sort of continually have that iteration loop. There's um, just sure. really good jumpers out there, you <laughs> sure, know, that yes. want to get up there and see if they can break Hey, I mean, map, let's also, know? like, let's call a spade a spade. We have dev maps that we've also found the same, yeah. despite yep. rigorous playtesting and QA. Absolutely. Sometimes it still happens, and it's a little harder for us to make those updates than mm -hmm. it is uh, via Forge content, I see. Yeah. Um, now, I'd like to dig in a little bit more. You mentioned a couple playlists that the team's kind of actively cooking. Um, mm -hmm. First of which, you mentioned BTB Refresh. Mm -hmm. I think people will be very excited to hear about that. BTB... We can agree it needs a little love, right? Um, and it's time. So, what can we expect uh, with this initial refresh? Mm -hmm. So we have um, we have three maps that are going in. Um, first one would be Thunderhead by Dark Maiming. Um, Thunderhead's pretty Excellent decent. Yeah, I, I played I played Chaos these. And Wolfrain, and then also by Chaos we have Obituary. Yeah, these um, have been these would be. Mm, come we've out? been working on those for quite a while, um, and they are going through their final iterations right now, because BTB maps are so huge, they do take a lot longer to iterate on to make sure that everything is functioning correctly and to make sure every nook and cranny... Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm excited for the Forge BTB maps. Can't, it's starting to sound like there isn't going to be any dev-made ones. I mean, Sketch just said, like, BTB definitely needs some more. But, like, at least we're getting some Forge ones. That's decent, I guess. ...updating the playlists for Firefight King of the Hill and adding some additional maps into that as well. Yes, we are. We're adding maps to that, um, and I would also love to see more Forge maps made by people that could support that mode because we really want to add a lot of community maps to that playlist as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. And he launched with a couple, but having some extras yes. wouldn't hurt. Yeah. And we should. We're also still targeting the Firefight Kingdom Hill refresh, also for next month as well. Yes, currently, we right? are. Mm -hmm. And I think the last near-term one that's kind of actively cooking right now is some updates to Husky Raid. Is that correct? Husky Raid and Squad Battle. Oh, and Squad, squad Battle. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now you're so, speaking our language. Yeah, so when, so when Community Playlist first started coming out, we really came out with those modes initially, and they've been around for a while, so we just want to build on those. But we're also, you know, I'm not going to name them now, but down, in the, down the road, we are definitely looking at original, original maps in brand new playlists as well, but we do want to, you know, continue to add more content lose. to playlists that came around we weren't sure you know how everybody would like them and they were so beloved that they've become staples which is why they're still in rotation so we want to continue to add to those cool well i think uh last thing i was hoping to chat with you about if we wanted to look a little further ahead mm -hmm. as we think about playlists um obviously we sort of have the playlist as they exist today right it's a specific type of experience you'll choose it and you'll just go find people to play with but um, I've kind of already teased this a little bit publicly that we're also cooking up um, what I will just call sort of a match composer-esque functionality mm -hmm. that should be coming infinite a little bit later this year. Yep. Um, how are you and the team thinking about that? Okay. Like, is it, I assume okay. that's very exciting for you all. Yes, we're, we're super excited because, you know, I know these two extractions still be kind of cool. want our players to have to scroll so far down to find all the content. I don't miss drones so that much at all. In there, honestly, they're kind of annoying. The, the cool, like I wouldn't be against them bringing, you know, they're bringing them back. The but the list, or we want to come out with more playlists, but that list is just going to get so long that this new capability would allow players to search more directly for what is the size of you know the team you want to be on and what's the experience that you want to play on and that will allow us to add so much more content without worrying about it being hidden or without you having to scroll long for that yeah or i mean honestly i think a lot of fans would probably be excited to know that a lot of the things that today are rotational in nature because maybe they're a little bit niche and they don't mm -hmm. justify a full-time spot mm -hmm. In theory, I could search snipers anytime I want to once this update finally comes out a little bit later, right? Exactly. So all those rotationals kind of become evergreen at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I would still be, I may have to wait a little bit longer, like the more granular I want to do my search, right? Mm -hmm. But we're just giving people a lot more flexibility to really, I just only want to play these experiences. Exactly. Um, Again, a little bit similar Falcon's to what NCC been looking did, season seven at this rate. Honestly, it seems like season six I'm isn't even a thing. Excited. I cannot wait until we bring that out and just. What are we skimming on drones? Drones, absolutely. The they should bring back Bungie. It was reached two. PU. It's just gonna, it's gonna go really nice. I think it's the chocolate and peanut butter solution that we need to sort of making this content a lot more ubiquitous and accessible for yes. players. Yes, it's just gonna be more and more and more. And I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for it. Well, uh, I guess any final parting thoughts or comments um, before we let you go? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much to our forgers and our community. You guys are amazing. You're so creative. And I just hope to continue to bring more, you know, content from you guys, uh, remakes, originals, anything you guys come up with. We want to look at it. We want to play it. And we want to celebrate that. So thank you so much for doing that. And thank you for having me. Yeah, well, yeah the SMG would be cool. We, forward to the BTB refresh, the we just we don't need more refresh, precision uh, weapons, basically. For next month, and then, we need more uh, silly sandbox so items. So, uh, Fantasia, I'm sure we'll see and hear more from you as we get closer to future updates. Yes. But thank you very much. And uh, Play the Bring the Operator Helmet back this season. That'd be cool. Oh, thank you, Sketch. Appreciate that. That was a weird cut, by the way, going in. You see me sort of... <laughs> changed clothes instantly and, and shifted my seat but a uh, big thank you to fantasia and also pretty exciting news there about the match composer uh esque functionality that's mm -hmm. coming to halo infinite a little bit later in a future update um we want to talk about a few more of those but before we do uh we have a new guest on the set so please welcome mr tashi Hello. tashi good to have you here yeah thanks for having me we're gonna talk about hcs we're eager to but before we do that i just want to take a moment and kind of build on what Fantasia was sharing about that match composer. Yeah, it seems like all the good stuff's on. Couple free. Other, like, which is crazy. Features that are highly requested by players. The team's been actively cooking on, and we just want to give you a status update on that. So, John, I'll yeah. throw it over to you. Let's kick it's it like off. Networking. Talk yeah. about networking, yeah. something we've been hearing about for quite a long time. Yeah, since launch, we've had pretty clear feedback that players wanted to see improvements to our networking model, right? Complaints about desync and stuff like that. Uh, and we wanted to make sure we addressed that. So... Uh, you saw at the end of the uh, year, last year, we rolled out a test with this updated, a new updated networking model in Firefight King of the Hill, as well as a experimental playlist called the Combat Workshop, 
which took over squad battle for a little bit and we got some great feedback from our players. Yeah, Infinite's like live uh, service has improved so much, man. Issues I'd say with the previous networking model, but we've also as part of that test uncovered a few new bugs that we wanted to go after. Uh, but overall, we got a great reaction. Players were saying this feels better, but please fix up a little bit here and there before you do a broader rollout. So that's what we're doing. We're taking the time, going to make those fixes. Uh, some of the fixes so are already the done. Uh, I want to give a shout out to like Fusion Coil catching uh, the Banshee Bomb, right? As you're firing the turret, you swap over to the Banshee Bomb. Uh, that'll come out immediately. Uh, we've got some shot registration improvements, uh, ping the marking yeah that sure season two this is insane it is crazy to see how much things have changed we've got those crazy and even more on the way uh so that'll happen and then once we get it to a really more really good point, we'll do that broader rollout awesome and i always want to give a big shout out to everybody that took the time to not only kick the tires and play it but also uh take the time to i'd like to think that every one of us that brought the mark five you know, responsible your, for the mark four being free along with the data that the team's <laughs> gathering is really helped Helps us inform the right track here. Um, you know, much like that cross core journey that we referenced earlier, this has also been a passion project. So I want to give a big shout out to, to you and, and the team that's been really working away at this. I really need to tell about it. On behalf of our player base, thank you. You know, we talked about this before, but we made the decision to sort of stop trying to play whack a mole and go after a little bug here, a little bug here, and, and actually sort of take a bigger step play back. And, and yeah, it's insane to see like where it is now. Very positive. So far, every indication is that, it's, uh, that it is going to be, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a more significant change when it's ready. So yeah. that's cooking. That's coming in a future update. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to another uh, feature that's been in active development for a bit here. Um, and I'll just say another area of feedback we've heard from players uh, since launch is kind of twofold. Players are interested in more ways to earn content in the game mm -hmm. but also they're interested in opportunities to earn content that they may have missed that would have come out before so okay uh, it could be anything from early operations for, uh, events from the original days and those things came and went um, could even be things like content that we just haven't even released yet uh, old weekly ultimate rewards old rewards yeah. uh, we've had partnerships that sometimes have been bound by specific regions so Suffice it to say, there's a lot of content there, and the team is working on a way to help make sure that we can resurface that and give people the opportunity in an, via an earnable vector. So um, I'll just kind of say MCC players might be familiar uh, with something like Spartan Points and some of, some of the work the MCC team did to try to also address... Uh, earnable is there going to be a second currency implemented for that sort of that stuff? The team is currently also exploring. Mm -hmm. um, so we will have more to share on that, but that is something that the team's heard and is actively working on. I think there's going to be a free currency to unlock... And the ultimate rewards and all that sort of crap. Out, we also had one more cool piece of feedback that we've been getting around cheating and making sure we can address. Uh, That's going to be so awesome. What the hell? Any cheaters and go after an improved like anti-cheat system. So we are going to be leveraging easy anti-cheat. Maybe that's what uh, you, maybe that's what they'll do with the progression system. So you unlock a spawn point every time you level up, you know, and you right. use those spawn points to Very get the stuff welcome. like old ultimate awesome. rewards and old event it's items that you might have missed on. Yep. It should it should at least help uh, give us a leg up in the never-ending arms. Race I don't think it'll be the rewards in the progression system. I think the progression system right, will give you the points to unlock the rewards. Uh, you'll just be limited to like old ultimates and events, maybe unreleased content too. But I'm still completely fine with that because there is a few ultimate rewards that I sit there and I wish like, damn, I wish I'd unlock that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mostly a couple of visors and stuff. Uh, That'd be really cool, though. Rank news to share today. So, when Match Composer releases later this year, we're going to be adding ranked Slayer and ranked Doubles as permanent playlists to the matchmaking rotation. Very nice. So, this has been very highly requested, really mm -hmm. since launch. These are kind of tried and true ranked playlists, and when we brought them in as rotationals, they perform really well. We've seen the data, a lot of playtime, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to bring them in as permanent playlists, so they won't be going away. They'll be sticking there, and they'll be alongside Ranked Arena. So those will be the three... Yes, yeah, Sunsor Obsidian, Beltal. I mean, I have Beltal, to be fair. I want the, the red so glowing one that was on the Eagle Strike event, Ultimates. Ranked playlists. Uh, ranked Is that ten right chess piece too? Will continue to be in the rotation. I mean, I've played, I've unlocked all the event stuff, but for people that didn't, that's going to be such a good addition. Experiences and playlists to go into ranked rotational. So, uh, lots of good ranked stuff coming this year, and excited to just chip away at you know some really uh, heavy hitting feedback that players have given us. 
for sure. And uh, not to keep hammering on this, but maybe we'll even see an awesome midship map emerge that we could <laughs> <laughs> convince you to put in race. So it's just my favorite map ever. I Halo. just can't get it off my. Br- I'm still just obsessing yeah, the over. The covenant palette's so good. It's, it's I kind of want to see it though in like the flood palette. Like, what would that look like? A you know? flood, flood ship. Yeah, flood ship. All right. Oh yeah, and All the right. more kids can go nuts and like, oh, the flood took over midship. That would be awesome. Right Por- to Porous Inquisitor. <laughs> oh, dude, that is actually. I no, hate wait. you for coming up with that. That was so good. Moist ship. No. Right. Oh, Anyways, no. that was better. Okay. All right, um, community can vote. Maybe we'll do a switch poll. Tashi, we opened the show talking about some of the new customization and the Mark IV and yeah. what players can look for on January 30th. But of course, a new season of HCS means also a new season of some badass HCS customization options Uh, so talk to us about what you're cooking indeed yeah we actually want to start with a a throwback though so at the end of 2021 obviously we released halo infinite and with it this yeah this is going to be the hcs the old kits being unlocked bundles that were released with our partner teams uh well we're gonna be unvaulting those for the first time but Mm. there's some cool new upgrades so how about we just check out the trailer and see what okay yeah this is the trailer this is the thing that i've tried so hard to avoid today Okay. It's cool seeing the meal unlocked. And yeah, it looks like the full across core too, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's sweet. I might actually be tempted to buy one then. Multi-use web. Yeah, okay. Fully multi-use stuff. Yeah, the visor being unlocked too. Yeah, oh, damn. Awesome. I might actually that's have to buy one. one. Yeah. It's been, uh, I might have to buy the update one. Damn. Since those came out. Mostly for the visor, uh, funnily enough. Yeah, how can I customize my spartan more i mean that's just been consistent uh, yeah and no, i agree armstrong it seems like we're getting one arena map uh, have absolutely done an amazing sub forge maps so later on down the line down no sandbox editions so we're bringing back the uh hope that isn't the case team bundles from launch for the teams that are still remaining in hcs and those will be available for sale and unvaulted in the hcs shop and those will stay live from january 30th for the rest of the season and if you've already purchased these bundles, you will get the uh, retroactively applied the content for all of the other uh, armor cores. So it originally came from Mark Seven. Yeah. Now you can apply that coding to all of the cores, as well as the different weapons that are available for uh, coding. Yeah, like if there's any big so stuff, we'll want to show that at the end, surely. So maybe there is still going to be sandbox right? editions. And, and now it's all the I think maybe that's why they haven't mentioned a yeah. PCB map yet. And, uh, they're all customizable too. So if you remember from launch. They're all kits. They're yeah. locked completely. You can't even change the emblem or anything. Mm-hmm. Now they're unlocked. So you can customize them however you want. You want to change the... Do um, you want to put a charm on it even yeah. or change the emblem? Whatever it might be, just like with the other content that's in the game now, these are kind of you know, brought up to what we have. So if you've already purchased them, you know, this will be retroactively applied. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't purchased them, now you get a... Uh, oh, I mean, there's some big stuff coming long term. There is uh, absolutely some big stuff coming long term. Uh, some of the other ones that won't... But we record. probably won't hear about We're that sort of now. stuff until yeah, the end of the year. Some of the teams that are... Uh, I reckon. No ...in esports or in HCS, um, those won't be available for purchase. But if you've already purchased them, Again, all of that content is kind of retroactively applied, so you can. Come That's if even ready by then. But there, there is like big stuff coming. Those are those are very exclusive now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan would be pretty happy. He still wears his United battle rifle, I think. I was so. gonna say like the Envious, right? With the Optic Envy merger, the Envious Ooh. one. Get that, get getting that upgrade. It'll yeah. be real nice. Glad I got yeah. that early. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, that is obviously, like you said, something I know we've heard feedback on for a long time. So really cool you guys are going back and doing some retroactive updates. Yep. But, of course, we're also excited about the brand new stuff for Season 3. What can you tell us about that? Absolutely, yeah. So Year 3 of HCS is just around the corner. And, of course, again, January 30th, we'll have a new bundle, all new designs from each of our partner teams. And uh, got you know, for rather that? than me talking, let's just roll the video. And okay, the video. okay. Ooh. They keep showing those shoulders for Tenrai that haven't released. I'm praying, I'm praying, man. Okay. Okay, that's clean. Those shoulders again. These are some decent coatings. I like them. Might have to get at least one for the purchase bonus. I like the cracked design on that visor. That's kind of cool. I don't want to see some. 
Why in gold for optic? Interesting. Space Station buys is crazy, man. Like, it's, yeah, it's an eye. It looks like freaking Sauron. That's insane. Okay, there's some cool stuff there. Oh, the campaign codes is across the same. There you have it. Amazing. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you got to break yeah. that down for us. Yeah, pretty pretty amazing stuff. So shout out to all of the teams. This is their original designs, original creations. We just give them the templates, and they go nuts. And again, shout out to the customization team because the teams have more tech now. So you'll see, like, the actual patterns. You can mm. see Cloud9, C9, it says in the visor. And you'll see a lot of the actual branding that the teams use in their social yeah that's i i like that to be fair that's kind of cool to life now in the game so uh pretty awesome you get an armor coating again it's cross core so it works across all of them mm -hmm. and you'll get the visor too actually you see the star in the, the visor star, yeah, it's it's really, really cool so um that comes with it however there's also a really special new item did one of did that has one spawn of cross core gloves uh, Raycon bandit so mm -hmm. it is a new weapon model and it is one of three in a medals collection. So you can see there it actually has the demon uh, medal there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, cool. I love that model. And that is fully customizable. You can apply any coding to that. And the only way to get it is to uh, purchase one of oh, these. Yeah, there's no uh, one. Down. And support whichever team is your favorite. And um, there are three. So there's. we're not going to show the other two. But it's for the Grim Reaper medal as well as the Extermination medal. So, okay. So, uh, really nice. excited to share those when they're released. Those are coming a little bit later? The, those right. other two? Okay. Yeah, those will be later in the season. And, um, yeah, those will all be releasing on uh, January 30th. And, again, majority of the profits go to the teams. So, uh, all of your purchases help e help the teams fund their involvement in the Halo ecosystem, helps with player salaries and things like that, and just helps this HDS ecosystem go. So, mm -hmm. thank you to everybody who's been supporting the teams thus far. And, um, you know, hopefully fans are really excited, you know, for all the stuff that we're bringing that's new and also all of the stuff that's unbolted and updated. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Um, count me in. But, of course, uh, the customization is only part of the story. Uh, we more? can't have an HCS program <laughs> without wait. some events, there right? Yeah. 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 We actually need to have some competitive events that I assume are at the, at the core of what, you're actually, what you actually do for a living. So... <laughs> Tashi, without further ado, we are very excited to hear what are, what's in store for, for the roadmap and what are we doing this year? Yeah, so uh, HCS uh, Year 3 is you know just a couple months away from its first kickoff event. Oof. And uh, let's go ahead and... Twitch drops, let's go! Tickets on sale now. Tickets on sale now. Uh, like yeah. really, right now. Hopefully, we really get more right cadet coaches. Right. I would like that, but I don't feel. I honestly don't think I'd care too much uh, yeah, anymore. Because like with all, with all the cross core stuff, like last year, and so we decided. Yeah, credit codes would be kind of cool and infinite. With them, bring it back to Arlington, Texas, and uh, that will be the again the first event it's in two months, and um, yeah. How about we just jump into the rest of the roadmap as well? There's yeah, a lot yeah, more to yeah. share. So what's after that? Yeah. So uh, actually, to start, we've got online qualifiers in early February, and those all feed up into the. There's one in London. And then next one, really excited to share. We're going. There's to one in London. So we're partnering with Quadrant for the Quadrant in London. Nice. This will be we're finalizing. I can go to a HCS event. In May, and we've got qualifiers. I'm gonna go to a HCS event. First major outside of the United States for Halo Infinite. So this is a really big deal. Fans have been going uh -huh. crazy yeah. asking yeah. for them. So uh, we're going to London, and shout out to Quadrant, who've been amazing partners so far. And then we're, you know, fans are always asking for East Coast. Well, we're going. I to can go to a HCS event. Major. This will be in July, and again, qualifiers leading up to that. 
And then we're bringing things to Salt Lake City once again with the Space so Station fun. Major. And, you know, they're going to go nuts. That's <laughs> September 6th to 8th. And then we're bringing it all back home to Seattle, October 4th to 6th for the Halo World Championship 2024. So uh, lots of exciting stuff in the roadmap. And we've got the blog out now, halo.gg slash 2024 roadmap. It has a ton more info as well. It's got all of the online dates. It's got the map rotation. I did not care. I did not care. But like the fact that there's going to be one in London, I can go to a HCS event, something I never thought I'd be able to do. Blog for all the other information. Wow. Dude, it's good stuff. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, guys let him cook it. We're let him cook. You know? Well, on those yeah. <laughs> online qualifiers are literally just a few weeks away. We, yeah. Things really start kicking off, right? So. Absolutely. Yeah, we uh, did the kind of big map refresh on January 9th, and we've gotten a lot of great feedback on that. And uh, able to see more players jumping into the ranked arena playlist and playing too. So, you know, we've got the Bandit Evo now as the new starting gun. It came out with season five, but this will be the first official HCS competition and events with the gun. So, oh yeah, lots of changes. I th what I'm excited about is you have all new rosters, a new gameplay twist, and you know now we're gonna see again like who's the best team out there. Phase took it last year, but there's a lot of new and interesting rosters, and so. Yeah, we're really pumped. It's going to be a good year. Awesome. Yeah. Well, shout out. I know it, it's been a lot of work from a lot of folks, um, so I want to give a big shout out to everybody across the HCS team. Oh, like said, my food. Customization team as well. Um, all the content coming into the game was fantastic. And uh, like Tati said, head over to Halo Waypoint. We have a lot more information. And if you're not already, make sure you're following at HCS on socials just to stay up to date on the latest and greatest uh, for the Halo Championship Series. Yes, indeed. Cool. Well, guys, we're about ready to wrap things up here. Um, I do want to talk really quickly. Uh, I've seen some questions in chat, and I just want to clarify. Um, as we approach our January 30th release, um, basically people are like, well, what about Season 6? Or why aren't we calling this Season 6? Um, we're, we're basically we're making a shift in how we're approaching. Yes, it's not Seasons anymore. Forward. And for MCC players, it's probably going to sound very familiar, too. Um, the gist of it is that we're, we're kind of no longer referring to seasons. We're shifting away from seasons. So semantically, for what it's worth, our Jan uh, January 30th update will henceforth be known as CU29. It yeah. just kind of rolls right off the tongue, right? It's, a, it's a, it has a lot more marketing weight to it. But no, in all, in all seriousness, um, it is kind of the precedent we've established with MCC. Yeah. Um, and it's just a, it's a different shift in approach here. Um, as we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, this Future updates are going to be punctuated by an ongoing operations model that yep. will continue to offer 20 tiers of, of unlockable rewards for free on approximately a... So your ball pass, that seems like a really strange move. Kick off a spirit of fire when that goes live on January 30th. Um, also, just to make sure there's no confusion, everything else we showed today, uh, most of the things we showed. So the Mark IV, I want to clarify if you're joining us late, brand new Armor Core, totally free in the Completely game. Free. Just yep. log in, and it'll show up in the Armor Hall. It's yours to keep and adorn however you'd like to. You can now do that more and better than ever before, especially yes. with the advent, uh, uh, the addition of cross-core shoulders now. So shoulders, shoulders, helmets, coatings work across every core in the game. So that'll all be part of January 3rd. Seems like a really we weird move to be fair, though. That John walked us through a little bit earlier today. Mm -hmm. The Forge stuff that we saw from Michael Shore, uh, the Covenant palette, the, the mode creators. Uh, you can change the colors of trees and leaves and things that mean yep. a lot to Forgers. Um, but all that is also part of the January 30th update, as well as Tashi's uh, information he shared. HCS shop goes live with the year one throwback content as well as the brand new year three content we just saw. So that's all part of the free update uh, that'll be landing on January 30th. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say from us here at the studio, it's going to be a very exciting year for Halo. We are off to an exciting start. We have dedicated team working on supporting Halo Infinite and continuing to deliver going forward. But also, uh, yes, we have additional teams now that are accelerating towards the future, working on brand new projects. So I just want to tantalize you with that. So there are a lot of things cooking here. We could not be more excited. As part of that, I also want to give a shout out. We're actually growing the team right now. So if you're passionate about Halo, if you've got skills and you're interested, please keep an eye on the Microsoft Careers site because we are growing and uh, we've got a lot of exciting things. Uh, New games, something like that. Future. Something like that. So I You'll think see. that more or less wraps us up. I do want to shout out, like I mentioned earlier, in the next week or so leading up to January 30th, please stay tuned to HaloWaypoint.com. We'll take a deeper dive on the new map Illusion. We'll take a little bit deeper dive into Forge. I think we'll have another closer look at some of the other customization, customization. content yep. coming. So expect to see and hear a bit more on the way to January 30th. Also, I want to recap uh, what myself said to Fantasia earlier, right? <laughs> uh, 
at least uh, two committed uh, playlist updates that we're targeting for next month as well, which would be the first time we're putting some Forge maps into BTB, yep. which is going to be awesome, as well as uh, expanding on the Firefight King of the Hill playlist with some additional maps. And I believe Fantasia also mentioned they're going after uh, Husky Raid and Squad Battle as well. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, as the Forge community keeps cranking out amazing things, uh, you can expect to see more and more of that start to come into the game in a, in a meaningful way. Yeah. It is a lot. It's been an exciting, like, we're back. It's good to be back after the break. Um, I'm very excited for what's to come and, and, and what's ahead. Um, I guess I'll just kind of open the floor, guys. I don't want to take all the air of the room. Any final parting thoughts or comments you'd like to share? Now's your chance. No, I think for me, you know, I've been at the studio coming up on 10 years now. I feel like this oh, is probably the most nice. exciting time for me that I've been at the studio. We have Halo Infinite rocking and rolling, lots of awesome stuff. HCS Year 3, which fans are really excited about and we're thankful for, and then you mentioned new projects, like, yeah, it just feels good to be around here, so thanks everybody for all support. Uh, I would just echo, yeah. thank you for the support, yep. right, Infinite has been a wild ride, I would say. Sure has. Uh, Final and surprise and uh, a sandbox edition, grow please. Over the past two years and continue that growth throughout this year, it's going to be exciting, like networking, we, we mentioned EAC. Yep. Uh, big match ticket items, functionality, yep. right? All these things. We're like we've already done so much, and there's still so much more to do. Uh, it's it's going to be good. Yep. And I'll just echo one more time as well. It's been none of this would be possible without the community and without your support. Um, even through thick and thin. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for the nonstop feedback. They haven't mentioned um, new game a mode lot either. Of, uh, improvements and just the tra trajectory we're on. Not that they necessarily really have to mention everything, but. To, you all so thank you so much and i have to also just give a shout out to the 343 industries team here um just sticking with it grinding keeping their keeping their heads down and just really working away i know some of these things have have really been labors of love and uh it's just very exciting to see it all start to come together now from firefight to ai toolkit to cross core story mm -hmm. and now as we look further ahead and think about major networking overhauls it's just it's all it's all coming together and it's all possible thanks to a lot of people in this building and partners scattered around that are just super passionate about Halo and, and want to do right by our players and uh, want to make the best game we can. So thank you to everybody. And with that, uh, we will be talking to you more next week. Stay tuned to HaloWaypoint.com and socials. January 30th, okay, most CU29 arrives for free in Halo Infinite. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Okay. Okay. As far as customization goes, awesome. The Mark IV is free. Oh my god. That's great. Cross core shoulders, amazing. A lot more cross core stuff. Great. The new map, the new arena map looks really cool. But I'm starting to worry. I mean, like, it's not a it's not a season now, it's just an update. It sounds very empty. No mode was mentioned. No BTB map. We we are getting the Forge Me once, which is great. No modes though. From, from how it currently sounds. No sandbox editions. I'm a little concerned. Yeah, it was basically just customization and forge. Um, but because they're not doing seasons anymore, that means they don't have to tie the major updates to seasons. Things can just release. So it could be good. It could be a good change. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to skim through all of that again and make my video on it. So I'm probably going to end the stream because I really, really, really need the toilet. But thank you everyone that came to watch it here as opposed to just tune into the normal stream. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'll try and get the video out as soon as I can, but it'll probably take a minute because there's a lot to talk about. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all in, in, a, in an hour or so. In a couple hours, I guess.